My name is Glenn Storrs. I'm curator of vertebrate paleontology here at Cincinnati Museum Center. Vertebrate fossils are those animals with bones and teeth, and the most famous of those, of course, are going to be dinosaurs. Everybody loves dinosaurs. And here at Museum Center, we've been running a dinosaur field school in Montana for over a decade and collecting the remains of juvenile sauropod dinosaurs, probably a thing called Diplodocus, which you may have heard. We have at least 15 that have died together and we think as a result of drought. That is, they're congregating around a drying water hole, and uh, the water ran out, they succumbed to the drought, and their bones were uh, collecting on the floodplain. One of the ways we think we know that is that there are signs of these, the bodies of these animals drying out or desiccating. And a really good example would be what we have here. This is dinosaur skin from our quarry. I think you can see very clearly the uh, polygonal, non-overlapping scales. And here is a tiny neck vertebra, bone from the neck of this long-necked animal named uh, Diplodocus. Uh, adults are 90 to 100 feet long, but our animals are probably in the order of 20 feet long. So although that sounds big, by comparison, they're quite small animals. Similarly, here is an ulna, very nicely preserved. And the ulna is one of the bones of the forearm we have pieces of complete feet. Here's a nice example of a, a toe claw that these animals would have used to support themselves on the mud as they're walking around. And lastly, I'll show you a couple of exciting small bones right from the front end of the animal. Here is the, the back of the, uh, the skull. This is the brain case, or at least the base of the brain case, and the condyle or bulb that fits into the socket at the end of the neck. And here is that socket. This is the first vertebra on the end of the neck, and the skull would have fit in here. Welcome to the Invertebrate Paleontology Collections at the Cincinnati Museum Center. My name is Dr. Brenda Hunda. I'm the Curator of Invertebrate Paleontology. And today I'm going to show you some examples of some wonderful fossils that we can find in the local Cincinnati area. Just a little bit of background, 450 million years ago, this region of the United States was covered by a shallow marine tropical ocean that was filled with an abundance of different types and varieties of species of animals that formed an invertebrate dominated community. And we have an excellent example of a wonderful fossil known as a cephalopod, which played the primary top predator role in our Ordovician oceans 450 million years ago. In these examples, the shells are straight and what we call orthoconic. So these are referred to as orthoconic nautiloid cephalopods. If you can imagine, this outer shell would probably be covered by some tissue, but there would be the main body chamber of the animal living here, and as the animal grew, it continued to add larger and larger chambers for it to occupy essentially lengthening the exoskeleton of the animal, or what's known as the phragma cone. These animals were one of the major predators that also occurred in the Ordovician community and are most closely related to arthropods, specifically things like terrestrial scorpions and spiders. This particular sea scorpion, or Eurypterid, is known as Megalograptus ohioensis and is one of the oldest and most unique members of all Eurypterids that we have in the fossil record. It is unique because it has a very interesting appendage. And with this particular third appendage, we can see that it has these very large spines coming off of the interior surface of this appendage. If we were to reconstruct the animal based on this and other fossil evidence, we would see that this third appendage is actually quite a large proportion of the total animal. Here it is right here, the third appendage, with its very large paired spines. Okay? The rest of the animal, the prosoma, or the head region with the eyes, the abdomen part here, which is segmented, just like all arthropods, and the telson region here. Another very key, exciting feature about this particular fossil is the end of the abdomen and the telson, which has these blades on them called circle blades. These circle blades are thought to have been able to move in a pincher-like motion, such that it may have been possible that this animal could have reared its abdomen up back over its head, typical of what we see in the behavior of modern scorpions, 
and use those blades in a pinching motion to perhaps defend itself.